Come to a new video of heat transfer. Today we start talking about heat exchangers. Heat exchangers are engineering devices. They are used to transfer heat from one fluid in motion to another one. So a typical example is a double pipe heat exchanger where we have one fluid that flows inside a pipe, a straight pipe, and around it there is another flow of a fluid that goes through this annular uh, pipe. So there is a heat exchange between these two fluids. Of course, there are many different configurations that can be considered. So there's a parallel flow configuration where the hot fluid and the cold fluid exchange heat in this way. So the fluids flow in the same direction. So the hot fluid experience a drop in temperature, like indicated here in the figure, and the cold fluid instead increases the temperature in this way. In the counter flow, the fluid flow instead in the opposite direction. So the hot fluid also has a drop in temperature and the cold fluid increases the temperature in this way. So in this situation, it can be that the exit temperature of the cold fluid can be larger than the exit temperature of the hot fluid. And this instead can never happen in the parallel flow configuration. An important quantity in engineering design of heat exchangers is the area density beta. This is important to quantify whether uh, a heat exchanger is compact the area density beta is defined as the ratio between the surface area through which the two fluids exchange heat and the volume of the heat exchanger. So if beta is larger than 700 meters squared divided by meters cubed, then the heat exchanger can be defined as compact. Compact heat exchangers are used in many engineering applications, for example, car radiators or gas tur turbine heat exchangers and in nature human lung is a good example of uh, a compact heat exchanger. Another group of heat exchangers that's very common in engineering it's called uh, cross flow heat exchangers where the fluids move in directions they are perpendicular to each other and within the cross flow group we can define mixed heat exchangers where the fluid is free to move across for example uh, two bundles instead we we can have an unmixed situation where there is no cross flow motion because the motion in the span wise direction is prevented by plates that are parallel to the motion of the uh, fluid the popular heat exchangers that we're going to study is the shell and tube heat exchanger in this design a large number of tubes contained are contained in a shell and baffles are used inside the shell to announce the mixing and therefore the heat exchangers so this is one of the most uh, simple cases where we have a fluid flowing in and out of the shell and we have the other fluid that flowing inside the tube and does one passage like this it's important in heat exchangers to define an overall heat transfer coefficient. So if we take a section of, of the pipe, we have inside the circular pipe, we have, for example, we can have a hot fluid flowing at a temperature Ti, and uh, the, the flow is characterized by heat convection coefficient at Hi, then we have a solid part that separates the two fluids and we have the other fluid, a cold fluid, flowing outside at a certain temperature T0 with a heat exchanger, a heat convection coefficient H0. So we have a flow of heat from the inside to Ti to T0. And the heat transfer is by convection inside, then by conduction through the wall, and again by convection. So the idea is to find a convection coefficient that characterizes all three mechanisms as one. 
if we use the network analogy, then of course, these three resistances are in series. So the total resistance is the sum of the three resistances. So we have a resistance Ri due to convection of the fluid inside uh, the circular pipe. Then we have a conduction resistance R wall. And then we have again another convection resistance for the fluid uh, in the outer part of the heat exchanger. And then as we know, we can sum the three. Remember, uh, this is in cylindrical coordinates, so the R wall has a log term. Here, A i, A a zero are the surface area, respectively, of the internal fluid uh, and of the external fluid. Then, the overall coefficient of heat transfer, it's usually called U, as has this unit is defined by calling q dot equal delta t divided by r and this is equal to u a delta t in general there are two u so there's u referring to uh, the internal fluid and u u i and u zero that refers to the outer fluid but usually the solid wall is very very thin so a zero can be well approximated by AI and therefore we can just define one overall heat transfer coefficient U because the resistance due to uh, conduction can be neglected. So the formula we've seen before with the little algebra allows us to find U and this is the expression one divided by U equal to one divided by HI plus one divided by H O. We have to be really careful. We cannot sum the two H O, but this is the formula. So when one or the two H is much smaller than the other one, that's the heat transfer coefficient that uh, will impact on you. And therefore, if, for example, if H zero is much larger than the A I, then U, their overall heat transfer coefficient will be equal to H I. And this is the reason why fins are usually placed where H is small. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next class.